should you be saying stuff like that, you know? I'm actually really excited for tonight for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> Coming up, Michelle and Claire meet for a showdown. Every time I speak to you, I've always felt that you've been quite fake. <laughs> we see how the spiker gets his comeuppance. Hey. <laughs> and things don't go quite to plan at Bobby's. and Buff One is enjoying his beer, but he's failed to notice a suspicious frothing. Hopefully, fingers crossed it's working. Not too sure yet, but we're uh, having a good time and we should see this off soon. Enjoy it. Virgil tries to find out if the Viagra has taken effect. And there's enough stimulation around. One of the lads can't contain himself and tells Buff One what they've done. <laughs> A few minutes later, Virgil decides it's time to find out how the penetrator is feeling. Chief. Chief. Right. Stand up for a minute, mate. I stand up. Yeah, stand up. Right, mate, as you know, it was uh, some of the lads' birthdays. Yep. Yeah. Right, now, um, we, all, we all know that we played the trick on the Nick and the Viagra. Yeah, yeah. But uh, we also put it in your drink as well. But, in my drink as well? Yeah. yeah. Did you have a hard-on, son? I always have a hard-on, mate, you know what I mean? That's why I'm the penetrator. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you did have a hard-on most of the night? Every or is that night, just, every night. just the women, yeah? Every night, yeah. Oh, nice. The lads have a confession to make to their team captain, Virgil. So, uh, what about you, Neil? What about me, then, Wayne? Did you get one? No. No. Are you sure? Are you sure, Neil? Are you sure? 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 Because, because sure, we, we swapped yeah, and we put it on <laughs> your <laughs> drink. <laughs> no, if you... Neil, no. Neil. No. You just got a limp willy. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had a hard on all night, lads. Honestly, no yeah, hard on. He's not taken the joke well, and the boys help him to drown his sorrows. Hey! The night has ended limply for Virgil. It seems even a sex wonder drug can't compete against <laughs> ten pints. Back at Bobby's, the judges' table still not yeah, arrived. But then, too. from the gods... Been covered anyway. Right, hold up, wait, wait, oh, fucking hell. Mate, um, you, you tough, aren't you, Mr. Anderson? No, no. Don't talk about Excuse me. Oh, I ain't climbing and stuff, Joe. You ain't climbing? No, Joe, seriously. Right. If I get up there and hurt myself... Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a... Here. No, no, no. I don't put myself under strain, you'll... Yeah. Yeah. My muscles aren't used to it. Right, hold on, I'll, I think I'll better get there, because they're bloody useless. Get out of the way, 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 get out of the way. Just hold it, Pete, hold it there. Get out of the way, Stuart, get out, get out of the way. What? Ready, Z? Ready? Right. Hold it Help there. Him. Help him! Hold it, hold it. Right, let it go, let it go. Let it go. Let it go, V, let it go. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Right, slowly. Get ready for the weight. Bring it down. Fuck. Fuck. Hi, the eye, campers. <laughs> right, it don't really going, matter. Right. Going, come on, come on, come on. Stop on. fucking about. Let's go. Crap on it. <laughs> Right, take all that off. Take all that off there. Put that on there. Come, Stuart. Shouting. Right, I'll tell you what we're going to need now, right? See if you can get a, a nail, two oh. nails about that no. big with an hammer. No, no, a stapler on the wood. Stapler? No. Well, no but I want to put a nail in there so this don't move each first. Two big nails to bang it down, and then I'll, I'll do it. <sighs> See what I mean? All right, mate. While Scott chases streamers, Joe continues to work on the door. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. Oh, yeah. oh. 
with just two hours to go before the doors open, Joe quizzes Marcio and Scott about their lack of preparation. Right, yeah, I need to get the girls together, right, for the competition, OK? Jay needs to do her bit. But well, that's what I'm good at, publicity and business side of things. Banging in nails and setting up... But ain't no banging in nails. It's just a bit... I'm saying the streamers are missing. The table ain't day. Ain't just a fucking couple of streamers. I'm not done to Well, I haven't fucking been here. I haven't fucking been here. Everything should be done. Everything. I, it don't matter what we do tonight. Tonight, I will... If we had everything here, I'll get girls fucking climbing over each other. I, I've, got, I've got it all up here. It's, it's a lot. It's not, it's not fucking Miss Night United Kingdom, all that, all that bollocks. It's a lot. We get two of these, we get them up there, we go, yeah. hello, darling, where are you from? Yeah. Dagging them? Oh, sweet, you know. What do you think your chances are winning? You know what I'm saying to you? It's a fucking laugh. What do we need, streamers? We need, I'll tell you what we need. We need two platforms. What, Sergio? Tell him to get... Sergio's not here. Yeah, where, where, where's Sergio? Just Oh, no wonder. He looks at you and pissed off. Well, look. Michelle and the girls are getting ready for their night out with Claire. I'm a bit nervous. I don't know why. There's something there in my tummy. And then I think, oh, I can't look pretty tonight. They were quite, they were friendly today, weren't they? So we went round that today, and she didn't know we were going round there, so she wasn't with the makeup and the face on. Whereas tonight, she'll probably look quite nice. I'm not saying she looks ugly or anything, but she didn't have makeup on. It was totally unexpected for us to go round, and I felt quite good about that. Claire did do something wrong, but Serge is the one. You, with basically, you can't help the way you feel. I hate feeling that I have to compete with her, but. I do have to compete with her. She, you know, she took something away from me, and it's like she won in a way. Meeting Claire. Yeah. Meeting Claire, yeah, tonight. Interesting night ahead. It's almost time for the contest at Bobby's. Joe checks the club's transformation is complete. <laughs> PR Barry is in sparkling form. Yeah, I did because I've done fucking most of it. Yeah, no, well, as you see, the difference in the table, I told you. That dirty old poxy bit of door. Thanks for now, you know. Yeah, I knew we'd get there. Hello, hello. Joe checks his compares, Mike. Can you hear me out there? We can hear you. You are, mate. We can hear you. Lovely, yeah. All right, mate. Lovely, yeah. And the girls wanting to enter the contest come thick and fast. Hello. 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 Number down, mark her number. 21. Michelle and the girls arrive at the bar to meet Claire. She's already there with her friends, as planned. Frostily, but the DJ soon breaks the ice. And Michelle and Claire decide to share a favourite song. All appears well between them, and Sarah takes a photo she'd not expected. But soon, true feelings surface. No, baby, I just wanted to say, you know, it's been a year, and we've never really, I know, we've never had it out, have we? So you can't help what you feel, but it happens at the end of the day. And yeah, I was pissed off and I hated you, and I thought, this is the fact that you're actually... I mean, everyone said to me, you're similar to me in a way, anyway. And all of my that little stage, And yeah, I've said to the girls, you know, every time I speak to you, I've always felt that you've been quite fake, and I've 
I'm a lot calmer now. I've got to smack myself in the face and realise that I've got to find someone new. He's not worth it. They're happy together. Leave them to it. Wish them luck. Move on. I'm having a look. Definitely tonight, I'm really up for it. I'm going to have a look around. I'm going to open my eyes a bit more than I have in the last few nights. Come on, come on. Back at Bobby's, and the fun is finally about to begin. Right, I'll tell you what's going to happen now. There's four judges here, two girls, two guys. They're going to get marks. It's going to go on body, looks, and style. Everything seems to have started smoothly, but Joe's about to get more than he bargained for. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, darling. What's your name? Emma. Emma, where are you from, Emma? From Surrey. From Surrey. Number one, Emma from Surrey. Number one, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, darling. Where are you from? London. You're from London. Jess from London. Put your hands together. Maria, where are you from? Uh, Essex. Essex. What number you got, Maria? Essex. Maria from Essex, number 21. Thank you, Maria. Hello, darling. What's your name? Lara. Lara. Lara Croft. Tomb Raider. Where are you from? Graves End in Kent, number 22. <laughs> Joe wanted the looks and style, but some girls appear to be concentrating more on the body. Can you get back down? Hello, hello. Right, no, lads, lads. Lads, they're not going to get it out. They're not, lads. Hello. They are not going to get them out. Number four, what's your name? Joe. Joe, where are you from? Leicester. Joe from Leicester, number four. Thank you. The lads in the crowd now want more, and Joe's not amused. Right, can I have a security guard over there? Listen, we're having a competition. If you want to fuck about, fuck off. If you want to go and do all that, go take somewhere else and do it. Let's do this first, and then you can do what you fucking like. But what Joe won't give, some contestants will. Oh, oh, good God, it's getting worse. Hello. Oh, fuck this. Hello, darling, what's your name? Some clubbers are thrown out, and to restore order, Joe decides to start the judging. We're going to call just three girls now to come back up here and just stand there. And then, we, and then in the next five minutes, we're going to choose me and the other three judges. Two judges for the win then, out of the four top four. Number one, definitely. Which one's that? The uh, long one from Surrey. I want to see everybody clap their hands for the breakdown. Hey, I 
don't remember the girls in the competition at all. What's this all good time, man? Ladies and gentlemen, the moment we've all been waiting for. All judges have agreed, right? The last two contestants have both been so good that we're going to give them 50,000 each. Jess and Emma, make your way back up there. Right, so these are the winners, ladies and gentlemen. Emma, 50,000. And 50,000 for Jess. Ladies and gentlemen, Bobby's winners are Bobby's and Busby's, Emma and Jess. Please put your hands together. Coming up next week, which way will Barry Sparkle swing on a big night out? I go out and I don't know if I'm going to go for a girl or I'm going to go for a bloke. Michelle stays on and tries out for a job at Club 1830. I've got an excited feeling in me that I could get it. And can Tenerife survive the onslaught of two battalions of paratroopers? Sure. Hey. Do you believe this girl called the Clancy Redmond Wankers? Yeah. Next Sunday, just ahead of Summer 99, our first batch of potential partners jet off for the villa. Bring a little extra foreign currency and be watching from nine. Next, though, it's back to the beginning for Dilbert. <laughs> Tonight, which way will Barry Sparkle swing on a big night out? I go out and I don't know if I'm going to go for a girl or I'm going to go for a bloke. Will Michelle dance her way into a job at Club 1830? I've got an excited feeling in me that I could get it. And can Tenerife survive the onslaught of two battalions of paratroopers? Do you believe this girl called the Panshee Regiment Wankers? Look at this. Yeah. Every night in Tenerife, over a hundred PRs descend on the tiny strip of Veronica's, all battling against each other to lure holidaymakers into their bar or club. Oh, I've got these lads, guys. I've got them out of McDonald's. Right, gentlemen, sorry to trouble you. Please, could I have just 30 seconds of your time? There's a bar here. It's the busiest bar around here, the biggest as well. It's open air. The most notorious is Bobby's PR, Barry Sparkle. Have you met? Have you met Barry Sparkle? <laughs> Barry Sparkle. What do you mean who? Barry Sparkle is a weirdo. Uh, that's the end of the story. Oh for fuck's sake! Do you swear you're a lady? Like, yeah, it's bollocks. <laughs> he's an insane, crazy, mad person, but he's nice to work with and he's nice to be around. Are you gonna flash? I want to flash. Go on, then, flash him. Go on, then, flash him. Go on. Show him what Lewin does do. The girls love him, the guys love him. <laughs> no, both ways. <laughs> look, shaking everyone's hand. It's probably saying, fancy coming home with me tonight later or something like that. Swings both ways, putts from the rough, whatever you want to call it. My God, I'll get done for here. I've got to be careful. <laughs> you see the professional way I did that peeling stickers without grabbing your dick? He ain't just a PR. He's got that extra sparkle about him, you know? The PR personally escorts new customers to the bar to order their drinks. But Barry goes one step further. Suck, girl, suck. Don't swallow, it's bad Bobby's wouldn't be the same without him. Are you up for it tonight? Barry Sparkle is more than just a PR. He's Bobby's entertainment manager, and once he's got the people into the club, it's showtime. Hang on, looks like Barry Sparkle and the Sparkle X in the house. Go, Barry! Go, Barry! Go, Barry! Move back! Move back. Barry's raunchy dance moves always get the crowd on their feet. Move back. Move back. Move back. Move back. 
and he knows how to keep them going. Michelle from Reading has come to the end of a two-week holiday with her friends, but she's decided not to go home. Oh, it's good fun. It was good fun. Just thought, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna change myself, stay out here. It's something I wouldn't normally do. Get a job, make some money out here before I go to university. Totally new experience. Shock everyone back at home, basically. And um, scare myself. Michelle's been offered PR work, but wants something more challenging. <coughs> Today, she has an interview for a rep job at Club 1830. Despite her cough, she must make a good impression. If I don't get the job, I don't get the job at the end of the day. I'm just going to go for it, so that's the only attitude I can think to take. Just go for it and just, they don't like it, it's their loss at the end of the day. <laughs> Managers Mark and Mandy will conduct the demanding interview. Can I take a seat there? She'll have to give her all to prove to them she has a personality and talent for the job. Right, Michelle, first of all, the next sort of ten minutes is just going to be a little sort of chat. Normally I'm a really organised person. I don't do anything spare at the moment. Plan everything. Terrible. I thought, this is it, I'm going to change. I don't know, it's like a middle-aged crisis or something, a bit early, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, big spender! Do a lot of dancing, drama queen. Danced with the London Lewis Ballet Company. I was in the Nutcracker. A little snowflake. It's <laughs> got any jobs? One quick job. How do you fit an elephant in a carry bag? Take the F out of safe. Take the F out of way. Take the F out of safe. Safe. Yeah. Uh. And the F, F out of way. Out of the way. There's no F in there. <laughs> 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 At least you laughed. I don't know what they're going to say at all. I've got an excited feeling in me that I could get it. As Thursday night falls, a large family crowd gathers at the Wigan Pier to see David Ormrod let loose as the infamous Miss Crystal Star. Fucking hell, I'm not being funny. Oh, fucking hell. Isn't all that yours, you greedy bitch? I'm a chicken factory worker. He works for the chicken! You're the one that brings the hack at him. No, you just pluck him. I play with him. I fuck him, you pluck him. Chickens, I love them. Six weeks ago, Ashley was plucked from his bar job and given a chance in the spotlight as Crystal's sidekick. Baby, can I hold you? He's mastered most sides of the job, but now Crystal wants him to start doing sketches in costume, and he's oh, not right. too keen. Oh, what a nice. Oh, Turn the lights on. He feels intimidated and embarrassed at the fact of having to dress up. It's not he's trying to push somebody. If they don't want to do it and they've not got the hump to get up and do it and give it a go, then you're not going to get anywhere. Crystal needs a partner who's willing to go all the way, and he's got his eye on Pov. And I'll glass back to a very sexy, very luscious ginger one, our little Pov. Give him a round of applause! Beyond stage, you've got to have an outgoing personality. And Pov, he bounces around anyway, he's putting wigs on and acting the goat, so I think he'll he'll be ideal. And he's he's really up for it. But then again, so was Ashley. I'll carry on with this, it's called I Haven't Stopped Dancing Yet. Ashley doesn't know it yet, but tonight will be his last. And it's dedicated to me. It's the interval, and Crystal calls Ashley into the dressing room to break the news. Hola. Hola. Oh, righty then. So, how do you feel things are going? As far as that there is concerned, it's brilliant, like, just mm. the, being up there, the mm. microphone and what have you. I'm still, well, I'm really worried about the actual dressing up. Well, so. I thought that, so, um, I spoke to Pov, and I said to Pov, does he fancy doing it? 
So I'm going to do the same things I did with you. I'm going to set you apart. I'll give you six weeks, seven weeks, see uh -huh. what you, how you feel. I mean, you've done a brilliant job as far as the sound system, the having everything right, the echo unit, the bringing on, taking off, and one thing or another. Yeah. But I, I sense that, like when I spoke to you in a couple of weeks ago about the um, doing the character side of things, and I sense that you couldn't do it. So, um, you know the score, I mean, yeah. it's nothing, no decrement to you or anything whatsoever. You've done a brilliant job, you've given it 100%. Mm -hmm. It's just that I need somebody that wants to get up there and come on and do the characters. Yeah. So, you know, it, it puts more yeah. of a show on for, obviously, the public. Obviously, yeah. Ashley goes back on stage for the last time. The final curtain. My friend. I'll miss it. I'll miss it, like, cos... I like being up there. Now I've got the hang of how where all the buttons are and what to do and what not to do. Like, I've just, well, I've just got the hang of it all, but it's just the fact of dressing up. It's not me. Ashley's out, but Michelle's about to find out if she's in. Want me to put it back in? Okay. You can sort of tell within about 10, 15 minutes of an interview mm. whether you think somebody has got what it takes or not. Initially, you've got the, the bare essentials, um, which, uh, which are required. So, um, congratulations, welcome aboard. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Right, the situation is now. Obviously, you're going to be thrown right in at the deep end. Right. Really, really chuffed. Okay, then. Thanks a lot. There you go. See you tomorrow. Thanks. Oh, you are small. <laughs> you are smaller than me. I am. I'm five foot. That's the reason you got the job. <laughs> small is cute. That. Yeah. I'll Thanks see you a lot. Much, yeah. All right. Bye. He's Shoot. going on the gut instinct, to be perfectly honest, which is what we yeah. what we recruit on. Like you, you, I think you warm to her straight away. She does come across as a, a very natural, very genuine person which is ultimately the most important thing. I'm a star. <laughs> I'm a princess. I'm so shocked, really. I don't know what to do. This week will, will be, as I said to her, it'll be a very, very difficult week because she'll be put through the paces. She'll have uh, spills to learn. She'll have a lot of information to take in. She'll have a lot of training. Where we normally spend two to three weeks training people at the start of the season, she'll have an intensive week and then she'll be thrown in the deep end. <laughs> Tenerife is a popular holiday destination for the paratroop regiment, and when they come, they always drink at the Royal Oak too. It's always been a part of Edge Pub, the, the owner that the owner he's used to be part of well. and uh, um, they've me. just been associated with Power of Edge for 15, I don't know, well, for years really. After a two-month tour of duty in Kosovo, Melly and Dez of One Para have just arrived for a well-earned break. When you get the time off, you like to just go a bit mad sometimes, don't you? Yeah, just enjoy yeah. yourself, like, you know? We'll, we'll be back to work on Monday. So. As, is, as we'll say. <laughs> Their first night out is going to be a big one. Seven members of rival battalion 3 Para are also in town. I've got to say, three power, 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 three stint in Northern Ireland, they always have a break and then they come over here and relax. But they just go out to enjoy themselves, they're relaxing. They do a real hard job. I mean, the lads have just come back from Kosovo, they've just seen all dead bodies, they've been under a lot of stress. Um, and it's just nice for them to come away and go somewhere where they know they're going to be treated all right. You know what, you've got a second home to go to when you come to Tenerife or whatever. It's great away, put you up. If you're a bit of skin, provide you a beer money and that, no problem. As soon as the lads arrived the other night, they went, here's, stop it. Just say no. Um, they said, um, here's, our, here's our wallet, 
passports, here's our tickets, look after them, all behind the bar. Here's our money. Have we got no way to stay? Sorry, they're beating us up. Yeah, 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 they're beating us up. It's just one of, the, one of the things we enjoy. Well, it creates an atmosphere for other people as well. I mean, they, they have a laugh, I mean, pulling your fucking bollocks out and shit like that. <laughs> it's always nice to see them, because they're no trouble. If they do get out of order, you just have to say, screw the nut, and they go, sorry, mother, and then they're as good as gold. And they're wonderful, that's, and I that's, love them. That's my mum speaking. Oh, And I, I just love them. They're just great that bunch of lads. Coming up, will Pov make it through his first night on stage with Crystal? He's, he's very nervous, he's very shy, shaking, don't waste it. <laughs> he's a tiger! And the paratroopers claim their first victims. Help me! Help me! Help me! On the spectacular west coast of Tenerife, nestled below the sea cliffs is the town of Los Gigantes, home for the last two decades to 86-year-old Doris Dendy and her dogs. I spoil them to a degree because I do love them. I talk to them like children. Come on, Dad. Trying to feed him up. Her yeah. passion led her to set up an organisation called Friends of the yeah, Animals to deal with all That's the strays on the island. Who's a bullfrog? Doris's mission in life is to spay oh. every stray cat and dog on Tenerife. No, 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 no. no. Only tickles. Her other obsession is staying fit, playing tennis with three other women whose combined ages are less than hers. <laughs> and that's not all. Every day, just get the skipping rope and just jump up and down a bit. You know, when you first get up, it freshens you up. But Doris's weekends are for partying, and tonight is a Fiesta del Santiago, the biggest party of the year. Well, now, as the fireworks are on, all these dogs get terribly nervous of fireworks, shake and like leaves, so I always give them a sedative. Um, it's a bit of difficult to get the sedative in them, but I just put it in a bit of cheese, and we have no problems then. Sarah! Quickly, cheese. Oh, good girly. Right, Have you got your keys? Oh, no, keys. Her date for the night is her friend, Little Martin boy. Allen. He oh, may be 30 no. years younger Hello. than Doris, but he'll have to try hard to keep up with her. Shall we see if we can get a bit further along? Yes, I think we might see better if we walk, walk further along. The festival will climax at midnight with hundreds of rockets going off at once. Until you really have experienced, you can't really explain it, but at the end of it, it's boom, 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 isn't it? Yeah, it's just one continuous... Uh, yes, absolutely fantastic it is. At the Wigan Pier, glass collector Pov is getting ready for his stage debut. How are you feeling on your uh, first night? Oh, uh, a bit nervous. Well, in fact, very nervous. He knows that Crystal expects everything to be perfect. I wouldn't say I'm strict or tough, but if there's something wrong, I have my say, and that's it. It's end off, you know what I mean? Tonight is make or break for Pov, who's always dreamt of being a DJ. That might be funny, but there's a lot of money in it. A lot of money over here to be earned in it. And if it can be done, I'll do it. Is everyone all right? Give us a yell. Ashley's back behind the bar where he can still put on a show and give advice to Paul. Yeah, I'm very happy to be on the Advice of the day. I've already told him tonight. I've already told Paul he's getting leveled. Pov decides to take Thank Ashley's tip. Go on, then. My chance, you know? uh, depth charges. Basically, you've got uh, lager, cider, uh, shot of lime, and then you have a little shot of vodka. You just drop into the glass. All the vodka rises to the top and knocks your elbow. <laughs> I think I'll need it. Get rid of these nerves. <laughs> Here, mate. To success. <laughs> In the dressing room, Crystal is preparing for the big night ahead. Back at the bar, so is Paul. I'll be all right. 
<laughs> the first night with a new assistant is always a tense one for Crystal. Despite several large glasses of Dutch courage, Pop is still not confident. When was the last time he was nervous? It's nervous. Oh, high skill. <laughs> Getting a ball and get off the headmaster. <laughs> Is everybody ready for Miss Crystal Star? Give us a yo! Yeah. Come on, I want a big round of applause. Screaming, shouting, bawling and everything. Right, are you ready? No? Things aren't going too well. All righty then, we'll carry on with this and I'll bring her on in a moment. Crystal will have to work hard to turn the audience around. Before going further, I'd like to give you a round of applause for this young gentleman here. This is our little Povette. Come here, let's have a look at your ginger. Now, he's, he's very nervous, he's very shy, shaking, don't waste it. <laughs> he's a tiger! It's all part of the job, have I not told you that? <laughs> and before going further, I've got to tell you, I used to be a prostitute. I don't mind telling you, honestly, years and years ago. And I went home one night with £10.50. My husband said, which pass did give you 50 pence? I said, fucking all of them, it was a busy night. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's Crystal Star! Crystal's off for a costume change, but she'll be listening out to see if Pov can keep the oh, crowd no. on their side. I'm going to carry on with some of it that goes a little bit like this. You played that once. I know, yeah. What's going on there? I don't know. It's hard to try and get your act together. What I'll do is I'll just press one of the other. There's something in all that you can sing along to or something. Change the CD, and with a bit of luck, it'll go something like this. See, I know all of you. But Crystal doesn't agree. You're up there, your job is to keep them on the toes. There's 5,000 songs up there that you can pick from. Anything, just not this shit. I know it's your first night, yeah. but give it your and I'll give you so many bollockings, it'll be unbelievable. But it's only for your own good and for yeah. my good, because your job is making my job hard. Pop tries desperately to sort out his music, while Crystal tries to win the audience back. Welcome to Havana, have a dream, have a double. Welcome to Havana, where the moon is full and bright. But while she gives her all, Pop sneaks another drink. Next up, Pop's duet with Crystal, but she's so worried about the state he's in, she calls for a replacement. So can you give Ashley a round of applause, our, one of our barmen, please? Thank you! Yay! Come on, Ash. Right, what we're going to do, we're going to do one that you can join in with. And Pov doesn't want Ashley to steal his limelight. While the world was waiting, will do. But Crystal soon reigns him in. Character. Yeah. He jumps around like mad and Crystal likes to be in control. So he's got someone up talking over him all the time. So he's going to grill him, yeah, until he gets the anger showing up. Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, it's his finished first night of here at the Wigan Pier. And I'm sure you'll agree with me. He's been very nervous, but he's done a marvellous job. Will you give our pub a round of applause? Hey. Off stage, Crystal is a bit more critical of Pub's first night. I think he's got what it takes for Wazum to give him the chance, but he's got a lot and lot of slowing down and listening and taking it seriously and taking it that it's a profession and it's a job that he's got to concentrate on. That's it. That is my night done. Thank God. That, I need this. <laughs> For Pov, the night is over. But for Doris, it's just beginning. <laughs> Doris has developed a strong rapport with the locals, despite not speaking Spanish. I've got a brand new lemonade and I'm celebrating. Whoopee! Martin, what have you got? I've got some drinks. Yeah. <laughs> All from I don't want to go thirsty. <laughs> I don't want to go thirsty. Best ever. 
At midnight, the whole town looks up as 15,000 pounds worth of fireworks explode in the sky. Have you ever seen a thing like it? It's absolutely fantastic, isn't it? I can't believe it, myself. Wonderful! Wonderful! on their special mission to paint the town red in time-honoured fashion. come up against their first opposition. They're forced to defend the honour of their regiment. at the fiesta it's 2 a.m but the young at heart stay up all night now what are we going to do now we to get you to bed to get your beauty sleep i want to go dancing come on then come along come along martin come along martin is flagging but with doris he doesn't have a lot of choice come on martin come on get yourself going <laughs> Whether he likes it or not, it's shoes off and on to the dance floor. Doris was a champion ballroom dancer, but she also knows how to rock and roll. And if Martin can't hack the pace, there's always a younger man. Living out here definitely, I think, keeps you young, much younger. Your whole body, oh, well, it loosens up. I mean, everything, your shoulders, everything is loose. I wouldn't go back to England. If you said to me, I'll give you much money, I'd say, keep it. I'm stopping there. That's me. Back with the paras, the skirmish continues, but one para have suffered their first casualty. He's got many spats his ankle. I'll take him up the hospital. Melly! Spats his ankle. Snap the ankle. If I can get out of here, just wait for it. Take it off, take the sock off here, take it off. How's it feel having broken ankles? No problem. I'm a paratrooper. If you were a real paratrooper, it'd be a crap home. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> if I could fucking walk, I'd crack on. That's not a problem. Just uh, get a little bit of, uh, get a little bit of plaster on, I'll be back out in about three hours. Melly is out of action. See you later, chaps. Have fun. Dee's son Andrew takes him to hospital. <laughs> Des is left alone to carry the standard for one para. You know where much for the fact <laughs> But the lads from Three Para are putting on a good display. Why haven't we got pants on?
three pirates the best in the world. Who are you? Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. I it's no contest. Lie. We're there. Okay. Well, you right. say something. Oh, I got it. Just you say it. That's not true. That's not true. Thank you. It's Michelle's first day as a trainee rep. She's just come from hospital where she's being diagnosed with bronchitis, but there's no time to convalesce. These are the speeches that I've got to learn, like the welcome meeting speech. I've got a bar crawl speech and a welcome meeting about the hotel and the resort. And because I'm not feeling 100%, it's, it's making it a lot harder to remember. And when you actually say them, I've got to actually perform it and act as act it, say it out loud, put the energy and the enthusiasm into it, and I'm really not in the mood to be doing that. By 2am, Michelle's been on the go for 16 hours, and the day's not over yet. <laughs> She's at the airport to shadow senior rep Doug as she sees off one busload of guests and picks up another. Gotta wait with them until they get checked in when they've gone through. And it takes hours by the look of it. And then you've got to go straight to your arrivals and see when they come in and do it all again. But you've got to be, she just said you've got to be louder and happier because they're like new, they're all excited, hyped up. And they're coming over, so you've got to click like that on the bus, wake up and be mad for it, basically. I feel absolutely terrible. Well, I've got a temperature. <laughs> I've just been sick a little bit. I'm freezing cold. I should look around like this. <laughs> Come on, lads, smile. Come on, you're an Aussie. Don't be shy. Where's the beer? That's what I want. Where's the beer? <laughs> the flight was delayed, but they're finally on the move. OK, my name's Doc. Quack, quack. Hey. And I've been assigned to make sure that you complete your mission. And that is to have a holiday of a lifetime. Yay! OK, I do appreciate you haven't had much sleep, guys, but come on, don't holiday, liven up just a little bit, OK? Can you do a time check? I make it 20 to 4. So come on, Vina. Get your belongings from above and below the coach and follow me inside, please. <laughs> Tell them to get the case off the coach. It's almost daybreak when the last guest is checked in. Gracias, that means my bed's in sight. <laughs> it's about, what is it, fuck ten to five. But Michelle has to be up again <laughs> in four hours. <laughs> I've got to go to um, the office and recite those three speeches that I'm supposed to have learned and I haven't. I don't know when I'm going to have time to do it. I'll either read through them tonight before I go to bed if I stay away. Hopefully they'll put me to sleep. Not that I need any help get up early in the morning and do it, so it's another early rise. <laughs> and I... <laughs> go. After the break, Melly soldiers on for his battalion. <laughs> and how long can Barry Sparkle's flatmate stay a virgin? A mission tonight is if he got... Sparkle is renowned for his enormous sexual appetite, but are the rumours true? If I don't pull and I go home at the end of the night, as long as I've had a good night, it's not, right, that's it, I didn't get a shag tonight, I'm really upset. It's just if it happens, it happens. It's meant to be, you know? Actually, no, I'm lying. I have sex every single night, and I have done since I've been here. And basically, if it's not with someone or a group of people, it's with my wrist, <laughs> and I'm left-handed, so... <laughs> I'm openly bisexual. Um, I've earned more respect from people for being honest and frank with it. Oh, yeah, you're yeah. right. Last week, Barry got a new flatmate, yeah. Alan. Yeah, that's not Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, off we go. Right, we're going to go um, pop out to a few bars, aren't we? Alan's 19, I'm 27. Uh, Alan, to me, represents innocence, and I <laughs> represent. What's the opposite to innocence? <laughs> well, first day I moved in, he said to me, right, what you need to do is get rid of all your inhibitions, cos, like, I've never done it before. So he told me to take my top off and take my clothes off. 
So I took my top off and I was just stood there and I was like, what am I going to do, what am I going to do? So he's like, take the rest of your clothes off. And I was like, no, no, I don't want to, I don't want to. I was like, take your clothes off, it'll be all right, it'll be all right. So I'm like, OK, not wanting to do it, but I took them off and I was stood there, stark as, as cacking my pants. And then he said, right, I'm, I'm going to get naked as well. And he got naked. I'm like, right, OK, right, let's get dressed, let's get dressed. And he was like, no, let's just stand there, get rid of it, have a walk about. I was so scared. There's no sexual relationship going on between me and Alan. Alan's straight, I respect him, he's straight. He respects my sexuality. When I was stood there with nothing on, he tried it on with me. And, and that scared me shitless. So we went out and I was thinking about going home, because I, I couldn't cope. Do you notice that I shaved all my belly and my chest? Yeah, I did, I did mine the other day, but it's like growing back already, so. But he did his before mine. So yeah, it's not like I do it all the time, time, but he's, he's never done his before. Where I'm from, in Warrington, everyone wears Ben Sherman's jeans with Rockport boots and got skinheads, and they're not open to what people wear. And I wear different trendy clothes, which are not, like, accepted. So because of that, people call me gay. And I, I couldn't take this anymore, so I just thought I'd get away from it. Take his kiss. All right. Alan is... I stand with my beliefs that, that I, I want to lose like the right person. I don't have to be married or anything, just the right person. I don't want to waste it because it's like something special. A mission tonight is if he got laid. I've got a whisper for this <laughs> because if he can hear me, he'll kill me. <laughs> Oh, you've put the pin on. Before leaving for their big night out together, Barry checks a sell-by date on Alan's condoms. He's had that since he was 14. <laughs> 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 it's out a day. <laughs> you can't use that. Here you are, use a proper Premix. Oh, you so <laughs> These ones are valid until... <laughs> until the 5th of March. <laughs> no, May, the year 2003. Right, one for you, one for, one for me. Well, actually, just in case. One for you, <laughs> one for you, one for me. Right. I've got two each, right? Well, that, that'll do Don't for me. Don't be greedy, because, OK, I only use two because I like both sexes and I like to be clean, safe sex in the pocket, OK? Let's hit the town. <laughs> are heading to Veronica's on the sentimental journey to the original Royal Oak. It's now a karaoke bar and popular venue for a girls' night out. Like a virgin. Woo! The boys quickly make themselves at home. Although he's outnumbered by seven to one, Dez is still keeping his end up for one para. Going strong. <laughs> Luckily, reinforcement arrives. True to his word, Melly has rushed straight from hospital to continue the campaign. Slap <laughs> tendon. <laughs> The men of three para are settling in for a sing along. But the hardcore men of one para have proved the toughest. It's 4 a.m. and they're going clubbing. You got a soldier. Of course we are. We all soldier on. I've been to the fucking hospital and I've still fucking got more more going me than these three parrot. Unfortunately for Melly, the club's on the first floor. Oh, no, but nothing can keep a good para grounded. <laughs> has his eye on a target. He may be down, but he's not out. The final conquest is his.
bar's up here. You give it a try to see what it's like. Have a drink. Barry and Alan are hitting the town. They're on a mission to pull. Probably knowing my luck, they'll all be after you tonight. Barry decides to start the night by looking for some male talent at one of the few gay clubs in Las Americas. He soon hooks up with Joe, one of his favourite dance partners. not really getting into it. It looks like Barry is, but they decide to find a livelier scene where Alan might have some luck. Hi, good evening. How are you? Right. Nice to see you. And once again, it's Barry who struts his funky stuff, this time with the ladies, while Alan's still dancing solo. has caught Barry's eye, but as they leave, Joe turns up. And who would that be? <laughs> would that be me? This is Joe. Yeah. Joe. English. He looks Spanish, Dude. though, doesn't he? <laughs> He's got a dick. That dick. But I only like dick. to watch. <laughs> 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 but, uh, First time no, I met his wife. Talented guy. He said, Maya, you're the only guy who I've found a dick that's bigger than mine. <laughs> it's Michelle's second day. She's had only three hours sleep and no time to learn her welcome speech properly, but she's about to be put to the test. This is about partying hard from sunset till sunrise. It's about... Um, mm, it's about... Crown. Snogging strangers, skinny dipping, topping up your tan. Um, Her exhaustion is beginning to show. Uh, just to let you know our official names, I'm Michelle and this is Nana. And we are just part of the club rep teams. Did you notice anything you've done the whole time? How many times did you look at me? Once. Yeah, <laughs> you were looking at the wall and looking at me. Because I was game. imagining other people. Yeah, yeah, it was good. You were imagining other people. Um, but for me, you need to pick up as well and look at me. The quicker that you learn this, the quicker you can be out the rest of the team. Yeah? Yeah. Her next challenge is to move into her staff accommodation at the Playa Honda. But first, she has to find it. <coughs> well, at least it's nice. <laughs> When she finally gets in, it looks like the last person hasn't moved out yet. Though there is some good news. <laughs> Do you want a Do. <laughs> I think there's someone living here. I've um, come to the wrong one. <laughs> oh, there. Despite the laughs, everything is starting to get on top of her. At the moment, I feel like crying. But that's because I'm just tired. I think tomorrow when I wake up and it's a new day, I think I'll be really glad I've taken the job and everything. Um, all the, everyone here is really good, really nice. And I think I'll, I'll enjoy it, but now I'm just too exhausted. I just want to just pack it all in and go home, but that's, I know it's because I'm tired. Mm. The boys' night isn't over yet. Barry may have pulled, but he's still on the lookout for Alan. Alan, I can see her from here. <laughs> I can see her. <laughs> and as ever, he's still looking round for himself. Got lucky. 
seems to have made a decision. Like I said, I go out and I don't know if I'm going to go for a girl or I'm going to go for a bloke, and whatever happens. I've had a lot of girls coming on to me tonight and I think I could have gone, but the first person I met was a guy, and, but he's not into girls, so for respect to him, um, I'm going home with a bloke tonight. Um, but there's always tomorrow, <laughs> or later on, later on this morning, because he's got to go work at nine. <laughs> We went out for the night. It was us. We started with two. We ended with four. Started, we got to three, and now we got to four. Now, this is my bit. He was up for group six. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, Michelle's under pressure in her new job. I'm panicking now, really. Panicking in my tummy. I've got butterflies. The trials of organising an underground party... People like that yes. do not understand right. the, the illegal buzz. And two mums leave the kids behind and have a ball. I, I didn't mind doing it at all. I'll do it again. Same time tomorrow, British Sex meets the regulars at the Muck and Mud Club. And I warn you now, they're not gardening enthusiasts. Next... <laughs> Coming up tonight, Michelle's under pressure in her new job. I'm panicking now, really. Panicking in my tummy. I've got butterflies. The trials of promoting an underground party. No, people like that, no, people like that. Yes. do not understand. Okay, maybe the, the tourists illegal might bus. Have. And two mums have a ball away from the kids. I, I didn't mind doing it at all. I'll do it again. It's August in Tenerife, the height of the season, and tourists are flooding in to soak up the rays. And as the sun hots up, so does the competition on the island for the holiday makers' cash. Some sellers rely on their pattern. England ladies, you like Tenerife? Scottish, Scottish. Hey, Jimmy. <laughs> Others, not so much. <laughs> you know you first speak English to us. But the job has its perks. German ladies, Swiss ladies, English ladies, Scottish, Irish, everyone is nice. There's a visual approach. Yes! No! Can we kill him? No! Can we kill him? Or tempting them with prizes. Because this is a star prize. Three this crowns. is the three crowns. Congratulations, yeah, sir. Thorsten oh, from Germany and John from Ireland sell timeshare to tourists visiting Tenerife. It's a tough job. There's two types of parasites in, ter in Tenerife. Cockroaches and timeshare. Hello. And we're one of them. Where are you from, sir? Come on, take a chance. It's a stressy job because it's all on commission. That means you really don't earn anything if you don't produce anything. This is not timeshare. This is not timeshare. They don't sell the timeshare themselves, but it's up to them to get people into taxis, which take them onto the head office where they're given the hard sell. People like to win something, and once they have these, like, okay, these, these emotions coming up in them, yeah, I won something, now we got emotions of them and we can work on these emotions for our use to get them in the taxi. Okay, okay. congratulations again. Please, when, if it's a 200,000 pesetas, yeah, the biggest gift they give out. Come and get as we go for a drink. We go for a big beer later on, yeah? You try to make people, you know, sweet. Keep them sweet and tell them what they actually want without telling them lies, you know what I mean? You have to just twist the truth a bit, you know, without breaking, breaking it. And this is, this is basically, that's life. I, I believe life is a pitch. Thorsten's been living in Tenerife for two years, but he still doesn't feel like it's his home. I believe I actually don't fit in this island at all, especially not about my music. The music what we play is basically, it is really underground music and it is synthetic music. Commercial kind of music is always based on a happy melody and what we want is, we want like something done in the music, we want it up and down, we want it like get the people into a flow, yeah? 
beaches in Tenerife offer every opportunity to chill out and relax. But some tourists prefer finding more unusual ways to unwind. Down the coast at the Gulf del Sur, we find working mums Shirley and Jenny from Western Supermare. They spend their days not basking on the beach, but away from it all, enjoying their own company. Cross the sky. <laughs> and the nearby airport. <laughs> Welcome to Tenerife. I bet they're German. They've left behind five kids and Tony and David, two very understanding boyfriends, for a one-week holiday and a new experience. We've always been on holiday before with families, um, but never on our own. So it's been quite an eye-opener, really, Jenny, isn't yeah. it? What, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's been... Um, what do you mean an eye-opener? <laughs> <laughs> Explain yourself. <laughs> and, and, well, I mean, everybody likes to get away from mm, their everyday definitely. routine, don't they? Yeah, good. Um, you know, from your usual shopping, housework, whether you're working, whether you're looking after the children, it's just really nice just to get mm. away and be yourself, really, as well. And just do what we want to do. We've got nobody around nagging us, which is mm. really good. The holiday was an impulse decision. The mums booked their flight on the Friday morning and flew that evening. Tomorrow they're off home, and they're determined that their last night will be one to remember. Well, this is a tune. When Thorsten's not out selling on the streets, he and his mates organise parties for other like-minded people. He's planning one for a week's time in a disused tunnel under the airport, but there's still some tidying up from the last party. Well, as we can, as we can see here, it's really still a mess. And a few things that need to be cleared up for either DJing. Fucking anyway! It was all my money off the party, and you, he was the one behind the decks. Hello, folks, are you enjoying my party? Yes, it brilliant. It was my birthday party. Hey, buddy, fucking I paid for everything, you asshole. This is my life, you know, this is what I've been doing the last 10 years. I've been following this wave, and I've been developing this music, you know. And it's really, like I said, it's a kind of revolution been going on. And I just want to be a part of that. I just want to, you know, want to be one... It's, it's, you know, it sounds a bit stupid, but prophets, something like that, going out everywhere. Like, you know, like, like people from the church going into towns and towns, you know, telling their book, the Bible or whatever to the people. Michelle from Reading came to Tenerife on holiday, recovering from a broken heart. She liked the island so much, she decided to stay and has just got a job as an 1830s rep. And perhaps more importantly, she's got a new man, Dan, who also works on the island as a PR in Veronica's. Dan's, uh, my, I'd say, my ideal man. Far, you can't fault him, always happy. He really cheers me up. I call him my soulmate because we click. We, he's on the same wavelength. He knows exactly where I'm coming from. But romance couldn't come at a worse time for Michelle. Starting her new job in the middle of the season means she's got to cram a month's training into a week. I don't know if there's any rules on relationships with 1830. I mean, there's not really a lot they can say, but at the end of the day, I think they're concerned that they are going to get in the way because you are basically living in an 1830 family and you've not got a lot of time outside it. It's only been training up to now, but today Michelle's got her final test to see if she can go it alone as a rep. It's been really long and hard doing all the training, but to, to actually get your uniform and uh, get your little badge thing and become a rep, it's a really, really big achievement. I'd be so thrilled. Michelle's first test is to recite a speech she's learnt. Hello. She's got to be word perfect. Right. Already, imagine there's 60 people in the room. So remember what I told you a few days ago? <coughs> nice and loud, loads of enthusiasm, bubbly. That fancy <laughs> 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 Right then, folks, you've seen the posters, read the brochures, heard the music. So what is Club 18? Now, if you don't know what Veronica's is, it's a strip containing oh, even comfortable rooms. But that's on a strictly... Red Bull for breakfast. And... Mm, Keep going. It's about clubbing, cabarets, cruising. And keep the noise to an absolute minimum after 10 o'clock. <coughs> Excellent. Very well done, obviously. You know, but in the time that you've had, you've done very well, and you have learnt it very well. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to put you in your first welcome meeting tomorrow. 
Oh, thank you. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, this is pending results. Michelle's um, passed the first part, but she still needs to get through the tricky brochure test. Here you go. Good luck. Don't panic. You'll be fine. Mm. Okay? Don't panic. I'll see you in a second. All right. Oh my god, this is quite hard looking. I know the first two, and I think that's about it. Name all the results featured in the brochure. There's about 13 of them, and I can never remember them all. Where are we, Tenerife? That would be good. It's not going well. Right. Okay, then, Michelle. How'd you have done? Not very well. <laughs> I'm not going to see. I'll give you two minutes to market it, and I'll uh, give you. Yeah, done. The fact that I'm actually this close to, to becoming a rep and getting my uniform and my badge and just to have it thrown away by a piece of paper, I'd, I'd be gutted, seriously gutted. Michelle's expecting the worst. Well, you've got 8 out of 15. Better than I thought I'd do. Yeah, it's not, it's not bad. Obviously, you do need to study the brochure more mm -hmm. because the brochure, if you don't know the brochure, it's like if you don't know your, your product. It's not one of the most essential things you need to know. Yeah, Obviously, nice, yeah. this is the essential stuff. And get you up and running tomorrow for your first welcome meeting and see Michelle, the uh, club rep. Oh, my God. <laughs> now I'm scared. No, you're not scared. Like Michelle's passed. Her there. training is yeah. over and it's a new start as a qualified rep tomorrow. Okay. All I'll say to you is, well, make sure you have a good night's sleep tonight. Because yeah. once you get out there, I cannot even begin to tell you, it's going to be like, oh my God, what have I come to? It, it, I mean, go, going into August, you've come at the busiest time. And also, on the other side of it, you're going to have the best few weeks of your life. Definitely. So it's all down to you, young lady. <laughs> excited. You're excited? Yes. <laughs> It's Shirley and Jenny's last night in Tenerife before returning to their families, and they're determined to have fun. Here we go. Happy Val España. Like to chuck a matito. The girls venture into a bar on Veronica's, and they're in for a surprise. It's party night. This is called the slap and dick and mama to go. Are you ready? One, two, three. Oh! Ouch. You got the choice. Do you want it on the face or on the ass? On the face. After three, everybody, shh, 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 shh. Ouch. Jesus Christ. The winners are the Hot and Holy Two. Okay, okay, okay. Are we enjoying Tenerife? The next game, and there's a fresh recruit to take part. Oh, yeah. Easy. So, girls, here, you listen. You have got exactly three minutes to dress these lads up as women, swap clothes, everything. Go. Give them a cheer. Go. You can leg it into the loo and get changed quickly. I want lipstick, everything. Come on. It's a first for Shirley, and she's already coming last as she follows the other girls into the men's toilet. <laughs> Shirley's competitors waste no time in stripping off. But there's a few surprised onlookers. <laughs> and there's just time for the all important finishing touch. <laughs> but how will the Shirley look go down? <laughs> I would set your positions, man. That lips are just like, I love you. Cheer, come on. No 
time for posing as the race is on to change back. Right there, the first couple to change clothes back completely in front of everybody. Go. I want you to change. Come on, if we see a pair of tits, you get a free drink. Uh, I've seen it. I've got a pair of tits. Get rid of it. We've got another pair of tits. They're bigger. Give her a chin. Give her a free drink. Get it on your side. There you go. A bottle of champagne. Shirley wins it for the hot and horny team. <laughs> I'm normally quite square. Yeah. I've changed a bit in the last few days. I thought, you know, you've got a party, you only live once. Yeah. So, it was, yeah, it's brilliant. Atmosphere was good. I, I, I didn't mind doing it at all. I'll do it again. <laughs> it's one o'clock. Pumped up with adrenaline, the girls are heading for a new bar. <laughs> When you're in your late thirties and you have all the younger generation, you know, it's very flattering. I mean, some of them, you're old enough to be the mother. Everywhere you look, that they're all out there looking and chatting you up. That's basically all it is. I've never been on a holiday on my own before, ever. I mean, it's the first time ever. I'm 33 years old. <laughs> I mean, it's great. It's brilliant. I'm going to be a Shirley Valentine. <laughs> Most people in 10 years' time, they look back and think, yeah, I was good then, but I'm not good now. And, and the thing is, you can be good at any time. It's just like your hair tie. Coming up in part two, Bastard. DJ Scott tackles a round of gold. <laughs> Thorsten visits Veronica's. I really have to say, I hate this place here. And Michelle enjoys her first 1830s bar crawl. If I didn't have this on, they wouldn't pay back to an eyelid and they'd do what the fucking hell they wanted to do. is the night spot in Tenerife and Veronica's is its party capital. We're going to love it. Tenerife is brilliant. The ghetto's fantastic. <laughs> if you've got a lady at home, then you can just forget about that. No, you're only here for two weeks. You've got to get fixed. The most notorious nightclub owner on the strip is Joe from Bobby's Bar. Yeah. It doesn't matter where the fuck you come from. <laughs> Where you're at, and you're in fucking Bobby's bar. But Joe and his DJ Scott are about to take a break from the nightlife to entertain two very different guests. Ooh la la, Bobby's bar. Ooh la la, Bobby's bar. Scott's at the airport meeting his old mate Alfie. Alfie DJed in Bobby's for 11 years and gave Scott his big break. He's arriving from England to make a guest appearance at the club for a special workers' night. You can't miss Alfie because if he's here, but he's... I can't see him. Seems to be a lot of people. Alfie! I was just looking for you. How are you, mate? I just got you. No, I've been here an hour and a half. Have you? Well, nearly two hours. I was looking, I saw your hair and then he just disappeared. I was like, what's up? Didn't I last off? Yeah, I'm looking smart, man. I can't even make you, am I? Anyway, I'll push that for you. Thanks very much. Thank you for you. Thanks very much. Got my new car as well. Oh. Joe's got a much younger visitor, his two-year-old daughter, Bobby Joe. Is that better? That's better, not that better. Don't talk like Daddy. Daddy talks horrible. Daddy talks. Bobby Joe normally lives in England with her mum, but mum's not arriving in Tenerife until next week, leaving the king of clubs to try his hand at childcare. <laughs> This is like ecstasy, you know, um, having something that I've wanted to, <laughs> to have for a long time with me to experience it. From the moment you get up, you can't be peed off, you know what I mean? Where normally you get up and think, oh, sh what did I go through last night and the headaches that I've gotten? No cheating, you cheating. But you can't, so she just, you know, 
She just brings you the best out of it. But Joe's about to find out that being a single parent Come is on. not quite as easy now. as it seems. <laughs> <laughs> do -do -do -do. Oh yeah, you the man! <laughs> yeah. oh, Alfie may have come over to DJ and Bobby's nightclub, but today he and Scott are enjoying a little R and R and some healthy competition. <laughs> so you can't concentrate now. Obviously. Oh, oh I don't believe it! <laughs> no, I don't believe it. If you'd have took that flag out quicker, it'd probably gone oh, in and out. <laughs> Scott's still got a lot to learn about golfing etiquette. Give me. I thought you were going to miss that. You should have given us a... Um, well, what's the difference, though? Like? There's no difference, is there? Well, of what? We're giving you a shot. No, but, but if you gave me, you'd have felt better about yourself, because I might have given you something down the line. Oh, is that the whole idea of it? Well, it's a gentleman's game. That's, I've given you two so far, and you haven't even appreciated it. <laughs> you wouldn't give me that. Well, I didn't know the rules. My I first impressions of Scott, a uh, cocky little bugger, which he still is to this day but his cockiness carries him through. I suppose that is part of his character. He was just giving it to me because it was obvious I was going to pot it. Will you give me this one, then? <laughs> no, no, no. I didn't realise that. You know, I'm a gentleman, Alfie. Yeah, well, there you go. You've learned. We'll Alfie is, to me, a bit of a mentor. I have learnt a lot from Alfie. Ooh, you lost the club, though. Because when I come to Tenerife, I was 21. You know, I was very eager. I had a big chip on my shoulder. Alfie oh, helped me. <laughs> Try, you know, moulded me into, I think, a better person. <laughs> Shot me. <laughs> you bastard. Probably would have just got over that, He's just it? got that era about him where yeah, people I, warm I, to him, you know. Like well, I've got that sort of era where people don't warm to me. <laughs> they have to get to know me first. First impressions, you know, people think of me as just being cocky, big-headed. That's, that's, that's just part of me. I didn't realise this was a gentleman's game. Of course, that's why they take it to see this. I thought like crochet was, or, you know. <laughs> I've never played crochet. <laughs> is it oh, Crockett? What is it? The one who goes like that? Crochet? What's Crockett? Is it Crockett? That's a guy with a little funny hat, isn't it? <laughs> That's baby Crockett. <laughs> one, two, yeah. three. It's 11am and Joe's brought Bobby Joe to his regular breakfast spot. Right. But he's made the mistake of going via the pool. Go and have some breakfast and we come back. No. Please. No. So you can tell who boss is, can't you? No. Please. There's no such thing as a safety shot in this... in golf. You've learned a lot in the last 20 minutes in this. <laughs> Come an expert all of a sudden, have you? <laughs> right. Hey, concentrate, Scott. <laughs> it nearly hit you, Alf, that ball. Scott and Joe may have got a break from Veronica's, but Michelle's working hard. It's her first test in the job, and it's a tough one. The welcome meeting. And she's about to find out the speech she's got to make. Right. You're doing far right? I'm doing far Is that all right? God. Yeah. Can I not go and hide and learn it? <laughs> Draw a photo of you. As there. the bar fills up, Michelle's getting nervous. I hate Barkle. Really don't like it, which makes it even worse. And I know a lot of lads at the front. I mean, as, much, as nice as they are, they're still going to shout out and that, and that's going to throw me because I'm not used to reaction. Um, but I'm, I'm panicking now, really. Panicking in my tummy. I've got butterflies. But as the dreaded moment approaches, there's a pleasant surprise for Michelle. Uh, Stan, it's my holiday romance. <laughs> Made a girl giggly. <laughs> oh, he's lovely, and that's his best friend that he's out here with. Well, his friend that he's staying with. Must be fate. <laughs> oh. But uh, Mandy was watching me then, so I couldn't like run over. Hello. <laughs> no time for fun. It's back to the job. Well, you've got loads and loads going over the next seven and fourteen. Days, okay. But to get the ball rolling, we've got something very, very special happening tonight, which Michelle is now going to tell us all about. All right. All right. All right. What has 400 legs, 200 heads, and will drink over 1,000 bottles of lager and 600 cocktails? You've guessed it. That's it. The 1830s bar crawl will receive the latest T-shirt from Club Night 1830. And you can take this home with you and be the latest fashion icon in Bristol, Birmingham, Banbury, or wherever you're from. Hey. Oh, I'm glad that's over. Uh, it wasn't too bad. I got into it about halfway through. And uh, so that's when I got said Banbury and got the lads involved in that. And I quite enjoyed it, actually. Quite enjoyed it. Yeah, it went all right. I need a drink, though. Dance. Dance. One man who also needs sustenance is Joe. He's finally managed to get his daughter out of the pool, but his battle's not over. Mm. Mm. 
Don't be naughty. No! If you shout again, I'm taking you home. <laughs> say, say it nicely. No, say it nicely. Say, please, Daddy, I want to go to the swimming pool. No, say it nicely. Please, Daddy, I want to go to the swimming pool. Please. Please. After breakfast. No. It's the final hole, and Scott's hey. in the bunker. Do you think it's possible to get the lift? Yeah, it could be, but I don't yield it. Oh, thanks for the vital <laughs> confidence, Alf. <laughs> oh, I thought he was just going to prove you wrong now. Do you want me to play it for you? That's, that's all the encouragement I needed. <laughs> <laughs> Good shot. He's <laughs> <Mr>. the man. <laughs> that was angry, Anderson, wasn't it? Fire away. Shot me, man. Yes! <laughs> On the last hole! <laughs> ching, 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 ching. Brilliant. Oh, that was me, the man. top shot. Brilliant. That, I mean, out, to do a shot out of the bunker, then to pull off. I said get the fin, didn't I? Yeah. You're going to be less than six behind, aren't you? Yeah. Hey! All over. Cheers, mate. I think you've only won by about three shots, though. Still one. Yeah, he's still one, but I go home a happy man. That's what it's all about, isn't it? The two shots of the day goes to me. Out of the bunker. Do you know um, I probably didn't hit any good shots then, did I? No, you hit some all right shots. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just an all right kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> well done, me man. We're glad. Yeah. Enjoyed that's it. That's good, yeah, it's a good day. God, I've never eaten so quick in all my life. Joe's won the Battle of Wills, but the war is far from over. What? Just won't give me time for nothing, will you? Thank you very much. Sorry I had to be quick, but... If, if you see a man collecting the water, can you fall, call an ambulance for us? Tenerife is paradise for many expats, with tens of thousands living on the island. Among them, Mark Hussey, relaxed family man, married with two kids. But 20 years ago, he was living a very different life. As Rollerball Rocco, world champion wrestler. I had a reputation of being quite a nasty type, you know, and the reason for that was that early days, um, that I, uh, I was a technical wrestler, a good technical wrestler. And I was on the bill, and no one was taking any notice during the time that I was, um, I was wrestling. They were going, having a cup of tea or buying a meat pie at the back of the hall. And then the bad guys, Mitt McManus and that, came on, and the people were going crazy. And I thought, well, I, I can do that, and I'm better than them at that. And all that. So I started being a bad guy. I, I made more money, I got more respect. I was top of the bill rather than on the bottom of the bill. I wanted to be looked at as a star, and always was. People thought that as a bad guy you were public territory and therefore they could stab you or shoot you whatever they want. So this one's a, this one's a nice guy here, and this is a small ball gun that somebody tried to shoot me with. I don't like to talk about, but I mean the, the, things like that happen: knitting needles, cigarette burns. If you're a bad guy, again, it's it's par for the course. Mark's 16-year-old son Jonathan is following in his father's footsteps and entering the ring, but as a boxer, it's not easy for him living in his dad's shadow. I feel pressure because there's a lot of people expect, expecting me to win, really. Because it's like, oh, you're the son of Roller Rocco, you know, the ex-champion wrestler. I'm like, yeah, yeah. So is you going to be like him and all that, you know, like... So it's, it's a lot of pressure on you. Uh, it's nice to go back to... Uh, back to basically with Jonathan. I mean, my career's been and gone, and now I'm reliving it through Jonathan. Jonathan's got a big fight coming up for the Canarian title, and it's a tough opponent. Now, this kid is a Canarian. He's going to want to win. He's not going to want to lose. He's not going to want to let, let some guy from England come and beat him. So he's going to be fighting tooth and nail to, to win that, and Jonathan is as well. So it'll be a really hard fight. Um, but to take it off a Spaniard in Spain is going to be very difficult. Summer long, Veronica's is home to the island's nightlife, packing in the fun-loving clubbers. But amongst the mayhem, Michelle is still sober and battling to keep control of 300 party animals. The more you go on, the, the more alcohol they get inside them, the more piss they get, the more daring they get, and they get more abusive. And especially the lads, you know, they've started to have, because they've been drinking all day, they're absolutely really, some of them are off their heads. 
and they're really hard to control. So, I mean, it makes life a bit more interesting at the end of the day, but, you know, it's, it's quite hard to keep them in order. You're all going to kill yourself. Let's get ready. One last fight. They all get a bit touchy-touchy as well. And, I mean, part of my job is to flirt with them, to make them have a good time and everything, but you, you sort of draw the line there, and uh, they, they take it a bit the wrong way sometimes. You've got to be careful. It is difficult because of Dan because, I mean, he knows what my job entails and, and I, I don't think it really worries him because his job's exactly the same, PRing, you have to flirt to get people in. But um, basically, he's got nothing to worry about because there's no talent in there at all. I mean, they're lovely boys, lovely, lovely lads, a lot of them. But I've only got eyes for one person today. So you're in, you're in, you're in. Michelle's first night working is nearly over, but it's taking its toll. It's a lot harder than I thought it'd be, but you've just got to keep entertaining them. And I, you know, you feel a bit like their mum. I mean, I'm younger than most of these people here, and the only reason they're paying attention to me is because of this. If I didn't have this on, they wouldn't pay batter an eyelid, and they'd do what the fucking hell they wanted to do. So, um, yeah, I'll have to keep going. to say I hate this place here. It's only two days before Thorsten's big party, and he and his mate Jay from Burnley are out of Veronica's promoting. They've got the tough job of tempting people from Veronica's to their tunnel party 25 minutes away. It's an even harder sell than the timeshare. It's a party, a two-mile long party in a tunnel. We've got a 15k system, yeah? We've got DJs from England, from Manchester, from London, from Tenerife, from fucking everywhere. I'm on the MIC. We've got everything going off. It's fucking... Basically, it's a thousand pounds worth we put into the party every time it happens. We make fucking double that because the party booms, yeah? If you lads don't turn up, you're fucking missing out. That's all I've got to say. Tickets? No, no it's no is... tickets. We'll give you a flyer, yeah? OK. Jay's had some success selling the party, but Thorsten is troubled. It seems twisting the truth in the daytime is not the dumb thing at night. Differently, this is my party, and I don't want it, don't want it announced like that. You don't understand, Thorsten. I do you, understand, you, yes. Listen, I speak English in an English way. OK, but... People like that, yeah? No. People to, like that yes, do not understand okay, maybe the, the tourists illegal might bus. That. Maybe the tourists, exactly. yes, OK, the illegal boss, you can announce. Yeah, but not fucking, not fucking, we put it thousands of pounds in there, not fucking, we have a, fi a 15k sound system. We fucking stay, we fucking stay on the truth. We no, give him an listen, illegal, listen. listen, we give him an what illegal... Do you, what do you sell during the day? Bullshit. No. What do we sell at the night? No, no, I want... They get I want will they be disappointed? I when they see it, will they be disappointed? No. No, they won't, but still, exactly. we're not no. in timeshare any moment. We are at advertising my party. And I think what we will give them is interesting enough. We don't need to lie. We don't need to tell them bullshit. We just tell them what is going to happen. And believe me, the truth what we're is them the sound there. System? What case is the sound system? All the sound system is going to be about... 10. 8, 10? Fucking no. Eight, what's we're talking wrong? about 8,000 what's, what's, what's wrong with increasing it to 15 for a few Listen, kids? Do it my way or I'm going to do it alone. I'm serious. I'm serious because I want to give them... I want to tell the people what they get. And they are going to get an illegal, underground, decent, underground party listen, with a deep, dark, funky English, sounds. English people are like that, yeah? All they want to see... Listen, if they need that to come to my party, they are wrong at my party. That's the bottom line. Coming up in part three, Michelle grabs a few precious moments with Dan. Boxer Jonathan gets into hot water in the ring. Don't put his fucking hand on what's wrong with you. And Thorsten's problems are only just beginning. Somebody sabotaged our things yesterday, stole everything out of the tunnel. Ah! Day of the party, and the lads have discovered that someone's been in the tunnel uninvited. It's not a peanut. 
basically. They've took every can of beer, every bottle of water, every drink that's in there. Uh, they've cut the cable, 100 metres of cable, running from the generators all the way down to the chill out area. They've took it, I mean, who wants 100 metres of cable? It's just a sabotage. It's sabotage. More than £200 worth of beer has been taken and they've no idea who's responsible. Undeterred, they carry on with the preparations, but the stress is building. Thorsten decides to leave the tunnel and promote, but John's not happy. Every time there's stuff that has to be lifted and moved in, he fucks off. Typical German. German and a Yugoslavian. Eastern Europeans. It takes an Irish man to sort things out. Hey, lads. If I die, I can't be so. Two hours to go, and they've still no electricity in the tunnel, which means no music or lights. The pressure's on to get the generator set up. Turn this here. It's got a light there. Turn what? Turn, turn that red thing. Turn that and just pull the fucker. Ray! Hit it! I don't believe Thorsten, I really don't. I really fucking don't. He should be here, he should not be out doing promotion, he should be in here. Just wait till he gets back. But Thorsten's got his own problems to deal with. As you know, somebody sabotaged our things yesterday, stole everything out of the tunnel, which is so fucking unfair that I can't believe it. Now I'm walking around and I find my my fucking posters everywhere. It's ripped off the crate in the front. Somebody kicked it away and ripped it off. So we have to watch out that these things, that we always rechange them. And if I see that somebody, he's going to have a big problem with me. The work's finally over. The generator's set up and the music and lights are on. Now it's just a tense wait for the people to arrive. In about another three hours, we'll have this place rammed. Rammed. 70 to 150. If not, I'm going home. But the waiting's over for Mark and Jonathan. How are you Tonight it's a big fight for the title of Canarian champion. Well, I just said, how are you feeling? He said, I'm good. He looks cool. He looks collected. I'm more nervous probably than he is now. <laughs> this is the time when he has to just tune in only to his trainer and listen to what the trainer says. You're up for it, aren't you? Yeah, good lad. And the prediction from the ex-champion wrestler? I think we'll uh, predict a points win for Jonathan. <laughs> Jonathan's big moment arrives. When you know when you go into the ring, you, you're up for it, you know, you're buzz, buzzing. You know, like crowds cheering you on. You get a really, really good buzz, so then, then you're then you're not nervous and you just think about the fight then. Think about what you gotta do. It's the first time Jonathan's met his opponent, but there's no time to size him up. Round one begins. Oh. On the jab, Johnson. On the jab. Jonathan started badly. He's got three rounds left to pull it back. It's another night out with the 1830s crowd, and Michelle's becoming used to their ways. Boyfriend Dan, however, is finding it hard. You know, she's on pub crawls with, like, you know, 100 lads. Uh, things could happen, but she wouldn't venture there. She wouldn't, she wouldn't go there with anyone. It's really hard. Uh, you, just, you just don't know what, what the limitations are because she's got so many rules and regulations of uh, repping. You just wanted to go up and like, put your arms around her, give her a kiss, talk to her. Dan decides to give it a try anyway and goes looking for Michelle, but she's still on duty. <laughs> The 
the 30s crowd is moving on, and so must Michelle. It's the final round, and both boxers have everything to prove. Goes up. Mr. Nice Guy is no good. I didn't box all these. You box better. I still think it's yours. It's fancy now. Never ever put their hand up. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Come on. Oh. The scorecards are in and the winner is announced. It's a triumphant night. Jonathan wins a coveted title of Canarian champion. It's two o'clock at Veronica's and Michelle is finally off duty. It was quite hard with Dan coming in because I was still working. It wasn't past two o'clock, I was still working. And I really wanted to talk to him and give him a hug and everything, but I knew that I knew that everyone was there and I still had to entertain the holiday makers. Dan and Michelle have got a few minutes together. It's going to be hard trying to keep this going with Dan. Um, he knows the score, I know the score. So we've just got to try, really. I'd, I'd like it to work. I'd be really gutted if it didn't. Don't ask, don't ask but once again, duty calls. I've got to be in the airport, picked up at 8.45. Right, right, right. right I see it's she basically works 24-7, so I don't know, I don't know if she's going to get any more nights off, uh, it's just, it's, it's hard to see her at the moment, I'd like to see a lot more of her. It's 2.30 at Veronica's and the strip is packed and one of those responsible for its popularity has returned. It's Alfie's special DJ night in Bobby's, and he's on a big nostalgia trip. We've been on that phone many times. <laughs> Had an hamburger in there. Got thrown out of there. <laughs> I'm going upstairs, I don't know. Up the stairs, Come on, This is what I've been thinking about since I left, walking oh, back up oh, the oh, stairs oh, again. Oh, you ain't on that. <laughs> well, it's dark up here, isn't it? Joe's left his daughter at home with a babysitter and is back to what he knows best. It's nice because I'm excited to, to be back in Bobby's again. I mean, it's great to be back and see that it's still doing well, the music still sounds good, and the boys are doing a good job. It's nice to see them all again. Ladies and gentlemen, this man over here with the white hair, his name is Alfie O'Neill, and he comes from Glasgow. And he's known as the
but 12 miles away, Thorsten's party is not going so strong. After all the effort and stress, only 23 people have arrived. I can't understand. I just can't understand. I'm looking around and I think I'm in a nightmare. I expected at least like 80, 90, 100 people. And that was the minimum what I expected. And it just didn't show up. And not much to say about it. It's just the way it is. Maybe there's Tenerife or maybe just really are just people coming here. They want to get ripped off and they just like to be at Veronica's and just like the flavor, the flavor, what they get there or the atmosphere. I just can't tell. I just can't tell because I'm just a totally different person. And <laughs> well, we party on our own. Next week on Summer 99 Uncovered, landlady Penny Bradley swaps pulling pints for cracking jokes. So how about anorexia? Divorcee Mick and four kids discover the delights of a family holiday. Oh. And on a workers' day out, Barry Sparkle makes the most of a coach accident. Yeah. <laughs> Get your coins out. Same time tomorrow, it's British sex, and a bloke called Dave wonders whether he should have his old man enhanced. Tune in, give us your opinion. Next, though, animated fun with Dilbert. <laughs>